in our midst. Hey. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. Give you the peace that surpasses the understanding. That keeps the heart and the mind. Through Christ Jesus. As you turn it in the scriptures. To the book of Proverbs. Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom. And the Lord was pleased with his request. It says because you did not ask. For riches the neck of your enemies. I'm going to give you long life. I'm going to give you riches untold. And wisdom above all else. And that's, that's really something. If any man lack wisdom, L-A-C-K, any man lacking in wisdom, let him ask of God. Who give it to all men. How? liberally and abradeth not. He doesn't get in our case for asking. Uh huh. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For the person who asks God anything and wavers after asking that person should not think that they will receive anything from the Lord. The Lord don't like for wavering on him. He don't like that. If we ask him for something, mean what you say and say what you mean. And don't back up off of it. And we can ask him for what he told us to ask for. He says uh, he knows what we have need of before we ask. And so he says to us, ask that your joy, what? Might be full. He knows what we have need of. He says, ask, because there's something that comes along with asking. Joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And uh, we need to get to asking. He, he goes to work already. He's already at work knowing that we're going to ask in faith. He's already working. He used to put it this way, and I'll say it again. If we believe God for a new home, he knew way years and decades before we asked that we were going to ask in faith. So he grew some trees already with that in mind. And had already in mind he was going to go and cut them down and prepare them uh, and put them in the lumber uh, yard so, uh, so the person who asks in faith, uh, they'll be ready for them. He knows our thoughts are far off. Yes, he does. He knows our thoughts are far off. You know, he, he knows what we're going to be thinking. If, if this was a thousand years ago, he knew what we'd be thinking uh, uh, 50 years from now. He, he knows. And it, sometimes we have to just stop and think how great God is. You mean to tell me he knows what I'm going to be thinking 50 years from now? He's already preparing for our thinking. Whew, we ought to be thinking right, you know. We want to think right. So here in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1 says, The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. <laughs> Woo! That's something there. Another. And we think that what we think is right and what we're saying is right and what we're doing is right. He says that we, we, we better check in with the Father of Spirits. As it says in Hebrews 12. Should we not 
rather be in subjection to the father of spirits and, and live. People who are in subjection to the father of spirits, they're living life in its abundance. They're living life in its abundance. Because they know that God weighs what goes on in our spirit. In our intuition. In our conscience. In our ability to commune with him. Uh, downstairs here. Upstairs a whole lot of action going on. And uh, uh, sometimes we confuse up here with down here. But be it known that what's going on down here is what really counts. So what are we going to do? Verse 3. Commit our works unto the Lord and and thy thoughts should be established. <laughs> I thank God for that word. I thank God for that word because I don't have to worry about being intelligent. I don't have to worry about my IQ. All I have to do is commit what I think I have to do to him and he will make sure I'm thinking right about what I'm doing. Isn't that wonderful? We don't have to be smarty pants. Just be committed to committing. Be committed to committing. Our works. Whatever it is that we really believe that we must be doing, go to God with it. And talk to him about it. He'll orchestrate our thinkings. Remember the prophet was told to tell us the prophet Isaiah in chapter 55 he says as the heavens are above the earth so are my thoughts above yours and my ways above yours. He said the way God thinks is so higher so much higher than ours until we got to uh, get a download of his thoughts. And the way we get a download is commit everything we think we have to do to him. And then he'll give us what to be thinking. And basically that will be based upon what he said. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from above not turn, return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and, and bud to give seed to souls and bread to eat as he says, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It won't return to me void. It will accomplish what I please and prosper where I sent it. In other words, he's going to establish our thoughts through what he say. This is why it's so important for us to get into the word. And so, uh, when, when people come to me and say, the Lord told me, uh, I say, show me in the word where he told you. We might be just full of subjectivity. Uh, he told you to do that? Okay. You got a word for that? Well, this is the word I was meditating on, Pastor. When the Lord spoke to my heart, I was right there. I said, you sure got something there? You sure got something there? Ooh-wee. I agree with that word working in your heart. However, if we turn over to chapter 18, Proverbs chapter 18, Proverbs 18, verse 1. Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. You can tell when a person is going wrong when he stops showing up. You can know they're going wrong when they stop showing up to body life. I watch folk. They come in on the front seat, in on the back seat, and then out the door. A person is messing with their own future when they're separatists. When they don't want anybody bothering them. When they're hiding out from accountability and we don't have any more responsibility than we are accountable. He said, a man through desire. I want to do what I want to do. And I don't want anybody to tell me not to do it. So I'm not going to be around folk that I know is going to tell me anything different than what I want to do. 
So if it's something that God wants us to do, we commit it to God and he'll establish our thoughts and then we can take it to anybody, anywhere. Amen. And say, this is what I, I, I have in my heart to do. And I was meditating in the word and the word addressed that thing in my heart and now I'm thinking his thoughts. Based on his word. And we don't end up in overload. You know, you know, you know what Solomon said about overload, right? Okay, let's go to Ecclesiastes. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Let's go to chapter 7, verses 16 and 17. This is what we need to be aware of so that we get to the Lord real quick about anything we're doing. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 16. Be not righteous over much. Neither make thyself over wise. Why should thou destroy thyself? Why should we pine away little by little, getting broken down, because we think we're so smart? And I can do this and I can do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win that whole neighborhood to Christ. You'll die trying. Mm -mm. if we think we're wise most likely it's in our own eyes because the wisdom of God is his son Amen. he's the wisdom and power of God so don't be righteous over much don't bite off more than we can chew Amen. and then everything by prayer the supplication with thanksgiving. I, I watch folk that are trying to do too much. I say, where do you get that wisdom from? Where do you get that wisdom from? Where did that come from? What makes you think you can do four or five things at the same time? It's going to be your own fault when you break down in your health. It's going to be your own fault. It'll be, it'll be my own fault. When I start having migraine headaches because I can't get this stuff off my mind. When I begin to palpitate, you know, I was thinking uh, about these folk that uh, boycotted uh, uh, the My Pillow Man and, and took his products out of their stores. And I was just reading yesterday with a chief financial officer of. Uh, Bath, bed, 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 brat, bath, and beyond. The chief financial officer jumped out of a, I think it was 17 story apartment and killed himself. Because in a certain month in 2021, they decided to pull their product, uh, get rid of the products from my pillow man. Didn't want their products anymore. And then when they found out that they themselves had to uh, close 150 stores, wow. he jumped out the window. So you don't play with God's saints. You don't play with God. You better find out what you're doing. My pillar man is a Holy Ghost filled brother. The brother used to be on drugs and everything. God miraculously saved him. He got a testimony. And God gave him that business. That's why we bought stuff from my pillar man. Forget bed and that other stuff. I don't even go there. <laughs> you better find out who you're messing with. That's right. I have to do that. <laughs> I learned that messing with my dad. <laughs> but this, here it is, verse 17. Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why should thou die before thy time? I submit to the saints over and over again that the majority of all saints die before their time. I submit that. Prove me wrong. 
The majority of saints die before God's ready for them. And then got the preacher lying at the funeral. God plucked this flower. Uh, no, the devil killed them. Because they were biting off more than they could chew. They thought they were smarter than God. <laughs> I remember uh, a young pastor came from Texas. And of course I was preaching for his dad down in Dallas years and years ago. And he, so he came here. Oh, he was all excited. That's before we had a ceiling in here, before we had these walls in here, before we had any kind of carpet on the floor and anything, you know. He, he came, so you know that was over 30 years ago. And he was so excited. And he had a picture of a Mercedes. He said, Pastor, lay your hands on this Mercedes. And I know if you lay hands on this Mercedes, God's going to impress me with it. I said, I'm not doing it. He said, you don't need to be riding around in a Mercedes with your young self. Pride goes before destruction. And a what? Halt the spirit before fall. You want me to be a contributory to your downfall. You think you uh, spiritual enough to uh, uh, drive a Mercedes? You better get you a jalopy. Get you a Volkswagen. Then another man came. He had his plans. He said, Bishop, lay your hands on these plans because I'm going to win this whole community. I said, brother, I'm not doing it. I said, you talk slow, you walk slow, and you're overweight. Your stomach's sick and all the way out there. I'm not laying my hands on those plans. And be a, a party to your demise. He kept on bugging me. We would meet almost every week. And I refused to lay my hands on those plans. And he didn't take my advice. He didn't, he didn't take my advice to lose that gut. And one day he and his wife were on their way either to Atlanta or on their way back. And he had a head-on collision. And he died instantly. See, see, it's not only God listening to us, but the enemy is listening to us. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do the other. I say, you better make sure that's what God is saying. You better commit what you think you have to do to him. Otherwise... I don't care how serious we are. Amen. If we're in violation of the principles of God's word, it's going to cost us and nothing anybody can do about it. Self-destruction and dying before our time. And then at the funeral, I spoke over there at St. Mark. I spoke at the funeral. And it was packed out. And I looked at his wife. I say, the devil killed your husband. Ooh, the folk were mad. That's why they don't vote, invite me to funerals much. The devil killed you. And say, and if you don't get under proper authority, you next. People didn't like that at all. Five years later, she's sitting up in our house dying. And there was nothing we can do because she refused to listen. She got under somebody that couldn't cover her and she became the pastor. Man, I wouldn't sit under a woman pastor. I don't care how sincere she is. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Because what she's going to do is feminize the men. Talking about the bride of Christ. Bride of Christ, nothing I had to tell them the other day. I say, there ain't going to be no bride until we become a full grown man. So we increase to the measure of the statute of the fullness of Christ. In other words, to a perfect man. Until we become a perfect man, there won't be a body that called bride. Oh yeah, he's working on the bride through the man. Because he's going to take the bride out of the man. And people don't know that. So you got a lot of women leading, feminizing men. And delaying the activity of growth to a full grown man. And people think I'm a chauvinist. No, I'm a biblicist. 
I watch women who talk too much because of their influence feminizing men. That's why men uh, around this city don't even know how to change a flat tire and don't leave their families because they've been feminized. They've been uh, without a father and letting the, the boy grow long braids as a little baby. Feminizing them. Don't even realize it. I said we've got to commit our work to the Lord that our thoughts will not be established. So we don't end up regretting in the future our decisions. Amen. Jesus is Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. Jesus is Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. So don't, uh, let's, let's not hurt ourselves by thinking we're smarty pants. Let's not try to uh, uh, do too much too soon. And I, I think I'll close with this. But where we're getting ready to build a couple of houses, there used to be a house there. And the guy that was in the house, he was out there to win the prostitutes and the drug addicts. The prostitutes, that's the main stroll in the whole city of Little Rock between Asher and Roosevelt is where all the prostitutes walked when we moved over here 30 years ago. People come from all over the city to get pick their prostitute up. And Sister Smith had to get out there and walk with the prostitute to keep them from getting picked up. And then when the guy uh, who was trying to help drug addicts and all that, he never would come over here. He didn't even live in the community, but he had that house over there. He called himself a missionary. He wouldn't even come in here with his smart addict self. Next thing that happened to him, somebody cracked his skull. He had steel uh, braces in his skull. And I was walking, talking to him. I say, what make you think you can come into this neighborhood and don't come here to see who's doing what they, they do here? And then he died. Then we bought the whole, almost the whole block. We bought the house and everything else there for eight grand. And if we had time, I'd tell you why we're here. Because we didn't get here by uh, desire. <laughs> we got here by design. Because right. really, I didn't want this place. All right. I said, these two buildings on each side, man, if they wasn't out there, maybe this place would be okay. Who wants an apartment building? Look at those folk out there hollering and can on. Crazy folk up in there. But eventually... When we got so low we could parachute off a curve, God says, now come on over here. And there's 99-something windows boarded up. Go down in the basement where all the matches and syringes and, and rubbers and all that kind of stuff. He said, this is where I want you, right here. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> on Front Street. In Jesus' name I pray. I'm through.